Today on Xbox or Briefs, we're taking a brief look at PlayLogic Entertainment's Zion. Releasing almost a full year after the launch of the Xbox 360, Zionide for the original Xbox takes retro-inspired shooter mechanics and with some fancy tech, weaves a challenging 3D spin on a twin-stick shooter. As Drake, you are the executioner for the judges on the planet of Mardar. The judges of this world have captured and sentenced the witch Agira to death by disintegration by jettisoning her into a nearby black hole the judges have dubbed the Maelstrom. Only things don't go to plan and the execution ship is struck by an asteroid just before they carry out the sentence. This asteroid contains the element Zionide which impales Agira. Zionide is capable of materializing the thoughts of anything it touches and Agira, now able to manifest hostile organic and mechanical worlds, will attempt to use it to escape her demise. Drake must battle his way through increasingly challenging worlds to stop Agira and escape the worlds created by her twisted mind. The setup here is absolutely wild and the cinematic to kick it all off is so well crafted for a game from 2006. Being a twin stick shooter, your ship moves with the left stick and fires in the direction you hold the right stick. But the world shifts constantly around you with the direction of your flight changing as you progress through the levels. While the game plays on a mostly 2D plane, the 3D backgrounds give the impression of flying through corridors with branching paths into larger open arenas while still keeping you fighting on that 2D plane. Enemies will enter the playing area in a way similar to a single screen shooter like Galaga and you must eliminate them before they start filling the screen with bullets or colliding with your ship. You start with three lives and the opportunity to acquire more through enemy drops and have an additional two continues to prolong your play should you need them. But Zionide still has a larger role to play as Drake's fighter craft is equipped with both organic and mechanic mutation paths. Absorbing smaller chunks of Zionide dropped from enemies will improve which path you have active. Each path also has a secondary fire used by holding and releasing the left trigger, which fires off an aimed or enemy-seeking missile, depending on the current mutation path. As the ship mutates, increasingly stronger offensive, defensive, support, and shielding special abilities are enabled, some capable of clearing the screen, providing a reflective shield or protective drones, or even projecting a hologram that can distract enemies while you get the drop on them. Enemies are always weak to one weapon type, so switching on the fly, done by hitting the right trigger, is critical to survive the waves of enemies. Larger ships, bosses, and mini-bosses, some of which have to be dispatched in a limited time, are best dealt with using the high-powered and focused beam of the mechanic mutation path, where smaller ships are easily dispatched with the spread fire arsenal of the organic mutation path. Waves of enemies will grow in difficulty throughout the levels, eventually putting you up against both enemy types simultaneously. The levels themselves also take on some of these aspects, with the early stages and enemies appearing mostly mechanical, and the later levels integrating some wild-looking organic waves. Arcade mode is your base story mode, taking you through the six levels. With four difficulty settings available at the start and high-score leaderboards, there is always a way to push yourself to play more or play in different ways. As you progress, you'll unlock the corresponding levels in level mode, which allows for further practice of your skills. If you really aim to accomplish the arcade mode on higher difficulties, practice becomes an absolute must as there is a good chance you'll run into moments that end with some cheap deaths. If you haven't looked through the manual, you should know that this game does not provide any sort of tutorial, and a few of the major mechanics aren't quite so obvious, specifically the mutation switching, and which power icons represent which special ability. But should you go into the game with knowledge of these mechanics, you'll find a good arcade style shooter challenge. The cinematics, especially the opener, are riveting and movie quality and set up a really interesting world for a genre that usually lacks much in the way of story. From a lore perspective, this world could absolutely be movie worthy, but doesn't really provide much of a payoff and subsequent cutscenes are really just the villain taunting you with no character development, revelations of motivation, 
or even history of what this witch actually did to this world. Audibly, Zynide's background music is mostly atmospheric and gets a bit overshadowed by the sounds of your weapons. There are not many tracks that immediately jump out to me as memorable, but they don't distract from the game, which is a good thing. As with many Xbox titles, custom soundtracks are available using music ripped from CDs onto the Xbox's internal hard drive. All said, fans of Twin Stick or Corridor Space Shooters should find Zionite to be right up their alley, and the game has potential to be talked about in the same way people discuss Ikaruga or Radiant Silvergun. It provides a significant challenge even on the easiest difficulty and requires both practice and mastery of the mechanics to complete. The price tag may be a little steep for some, but the current lack of backwards compatibility means that if you're interested in playing Zionite, the Xbox is your place to play it. There was also a direct sequel to Zionide released on the PS2, PSP, and PC a year later continuing the story, which is odd as the game seemed to be completely wrapped up at the end. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and share it with someone who may be missing out on some of the great games for the original Xbox. I also stream my recording sessions that I use for these videos live on Twitch, and a link to my channel can be found in the description below. Hope to see you in chat sometime soon. That should about do it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.